Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress tutorial. In an earlier lesson, we learned how to use page.php to control the output of our WordPress pages. Well, in this lesson, we're going to take things one step further. So what if we want to use different layouts for different pages? Now, most of the time, all of your pages will look fairly similar, and the only thing that will be different is the actual content in the main body part of the page. But there will be times when you do want to use different layouts or different output schemes or different HTML. So in this video, we're going to learn how to use conditional logic and page templates to do just that. So let's get started. Let's give ourselves a hypothetical task. Let's say that when we're on the portfolio page, we want a bit of custom text to display after this tagline. So right about here. And we don't want that text to display on any other pages, only on the portfolio page. Now, perhaps this isn't the most intelligent design choice, or maybe this doesn't make sense in a real world scenario, but I think it'll be a good proof of concept. So the idea is that we already have a header file that is used on all pages. So how can we make a change in this one header PHP file that only shows on one actual page? We're going to use something called conditional logic. The code will look like this. We'll drop into PHP and we're going to use an if statement. So we're saying if a condition is met, then we want to do something. So now, anything we place between this line and this line will run only if a condition is met. So here in between these brackets is where we define what condition we're checking for. So we'll say if we're currently on a certain page. Now, how can we signify the portfolio page with code? It's quite simple. If we're viewing the portfolio page, we can see that in the URL bar, it ends with ID equals 14. So it's really as simple as adding a 14. And then this is page function will take care of the rest. So now any code we include here, or excuse me, not necessarily code, just text. So we can say, thank you for viewing our work. And actually, let's move this uh, to sit within this heading level five element. And if we refresh, we can see that this extra bit of text displays. But if we're on any other page, it doesn't. A quick note, if your particular WordPress website does not show page ID at the end of URLs, that's OK. In fact, it's desirable. So let me show you an alternative way to figure out the ID. Simply go into your WordPress dashboard, click on pages, click on whatever page you're looking for or trying to figure out the ID of. And then once you click on it, then in the admin, the URL will say post equals and a number. Now, if you don't like using ID numbers at all, you don't have to. You can also use slug names in your conditional logic in our code. So let me go into settings and adjust my permalinks so that our URLs actually use names. So I'll change it to month and name. So now if we go back to our website and we click on portfolio again, you can see that the URL does not have a page ID. It's simply portfolio. So that means portfolio is the slug, the slug name for this page. So an alternative way of adjusting or using our conditional logic would be to get rid of the 14, the ID, include quotes and say portfolio. So if we refresh, we can see that the exact same behavior is still in place. Now I'll be the first to admit that this exact example isn't very exciting or terribly useful to include extra text in the header. But it's a proof of concept. The point is that you now have conditional logic in your toolbox. Now, anywhere in any of your theme files, you can use conditional logic to display different menus or different content or different anything uh, on any page. So that closes the first chapter for this lesson, conditional logic. Now, let's move on to something different. What if we actually wanted a different template file to power this portfolio page? So currently page.php, this is powering all pages. But what if we had changes that we only wanted to show on this page and they weren't subtle enough to just use conditional logic? What if we actually wanted an entirely different template? Well, WordPress makes that incredibly easy to do. We simply create a new file in the theme folder and name it page dash. And then we can include either the slug name of the page that we're targeting or the ID number of the page. So we could either include 14 or we could spell out the slug and say portfolio. That's it. 
Now, if we copy and paste code from page PHP into this newly created file, we can customize this any way we would like. So for example, what if on the portfolio page, we do not want to display the title? Just delete that line, refresh, you can see that it's gone. But if we go to any other page, the title is still present. Well, that wasn't the most exciting change. Uh, let's give us something a bit more interesting. What if we wanted the title to sit on the left side and we wanted this content to sit on the right side? So sort of a two column layout. You can do whatever you would like. So we could say uh, column container, give it a class of clear fix, say title column, uh, text column. So we'll move the content into this text column. We'll output the title and title column. So we'll say h2, use the PHP, or excuse me, the WordPress function name the title. So you can see that it's back in, but now we have this unique uh, HTML structure to play with. So we can just add a bit of CSS and we'll have a two column layout. So let's head over to our style sheet and add a comment to stay organized. Two column title layout. So the title column width 30%, float it to the left. The text column, take up the rest of the width and we'll float it to the right. So if we refresh, you can see that we have a two column layout. Now I'm not going to claim that I love the way this looks visually, <laughs> but we set it up very quickly. And it's just to illustrate the point that you can very easily create different layouts for different pages by simply creating a new file in your theme folder named page dash, and then either the slug or the ID. So now we've learned how to assign very specific theme files to very specific pages based on their name or ID. However, what if we wanted to create a template that could be used by multiple pages? So for example, you can see we have links down here in the footer, frequently asked question, terms and conditions, privacy policy. What if we wanted just these three pages to all share a common layout, but none of the other pages? WordPress makes it very simple. So we'll head over to the code, we'll create a new file. We can name it anything we would like. I will call it special template. Now let's copy and paste the code from our standard page PHP into special template. And we just want to include a comment up near the top of the file that says template name, special layout, or you can name it anything you would like. And then close the comment. This comment is essentially registering the template with WordPress. So WordPress is aware that it exists. So for example, if we head over to the dashboard, click on pages and find uh, one of the pages that is linked to from the footer, privacy policy will work. We can see that in the bottom right corner under page attributes, there's a template field and we can click it and select special layout, the file we just created. Now, obviously if we click update and refresh, nothing will change because remember we literally just copied and pasted the code from page standard page PHP. So let's go ahead and make some quick customizations. Let's imagine that we want some sort of info box or disclaimer to sit right about here over on the right side. So in our code, uh, we'll go between the header and the content, create a new section, info box. Let's create a heading level four that says disclaimer title, and then just include a bit of dummy text. Okay, so now let's add some corresponding CSS so that this markup will sit right about here. Oops, create a new comment, info box styles. Okay. So let's add the code. We'll give it a width of about 30%. Float it to the right, obviously. Let's give it a bit of margin so it doesn't sit right up against the regular text. Okay. Let's also give it a bit of padding and then a really light background color. Let's also go ahead and adjust some of the text that sits inside the info box. So remember we created a heading level four. I don't really want there to be too much space below the header. So margin bottom only five or six pixels. And then let's make the dummy text quite small. So the paragraph text font size, maybe 85%. So if we refresh, you can see that there's now this nice little uh, info box. 
And if we wanted this info box to also display on the terms and conditions and frequently asked questions pages, all we would need to do is head over to the dashboard, find those two pages, and adjust the template. So frequently asked questions, template, special layout. Then we can do the same thing uh, for terms and conditions. Okay, so if we refresh, there it is. And if we go to terms and conditions, there it is. So this is useful because if you imagine you have maybe 10 or 20 pages and you want to include a, a uniform text box, if you ever down the road make changes to this text, now you don't have to go to 20 different pages and update it. It's just in this one easy to update template file. So you can just change it in one spot. And that brings this third and final chapter of the lesson to a close. Let's review what we learned today. Number one, we can use conditional logic and if statement, and then if that condition is met, so if we're on a certain page, we can include unique code. Number two, we learned how to create new theme files that match the slug name or the ID number of a page, and WordPress will automatically make the connection to only use it for that page. And number three, uh, we learned how to create actual page templates that can be chosen from the WordPress admin screen. So we learned three different ways to send unique code to different pages. So that brings this particular lesson to a close. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something. And stay tuned for more WordPress tutorials. Thanks. Bye.